Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop and today we're making a chisel plane. Iron. Australian red gum. Purple heart. Let's have some fun. A chisel plane is basically a plane without anything in the front of it. It's even less than a bull nose. The blade is the cutting front edge and there's nothing else there. So it's basically a chisel that allows you to get right up close to things, but it acts like a plane. We want to create a bed for this to sit on and I want it to be about 10 degrees. Um, somewhere in the 12 to 10 degrees is, is the pre-normal edge. So I'm going to get some dividers out here and mark out an angle on here and kind of just scratch out a little bit of a, a shape for it. I want to have a, a little bit more of an edge behind the iron to fit the palm of the hand because if it goes straight to the end of the iron uh, it just doesn't feel as good and I want this to be a little bit smaller than a block plane but something that can fit in the the palm of your hand I have this beautiful piece of purple heart that will work out exactly for it so I'm going to rip it down to the width of the plane and this is going to be ever so slightly wider than my iron um, and then for the iron I'm just going to use an old one that I pulled out of a block plane that was uh, it was trash but I kept the iron on there so we're going to draw out the angle on here and run it all the way up across it. But I want to have a little ledge at the back so that the iron runs into that and uh, it will stop so it won't slide up any farther, but then something more for the palm to hold onto. Uh, you'll understand that in a minute. So once I draw this line, then we can start cutting. This is the tip of the plane and we're gonna be cutting back. And I'm not gonna cut all the way down. I'm just going to cut back whatever the length of the iron is so I have that little ledge back there. But I want the plane to actually go back into it, and the back of the plane is rounded, whereas the back of this slot is not. So after flattening out the sole and figuring out what I want, uh, I've realized that it's actually a little wider than I need it to be. So let's rip this down again, because my first measurement was apparently wrong. And I don't know how I measured the iron wrong and then cut it and then found out it was right, but oh well. <laughs> so I'm going to draw the radius of the iron on the back of this and then start chiseling back to it. Uh, to cut out most of that, I'm going to need a gouge. And I'm going to choose a gouge that has a slightly smaller radius than what I have in there. And I'll take it bit by bit. You chop in a little ways. Don't go down all the ways, just a little ways. And then come to the chisel and remove back to the line. Once we get most of that removed, the body is basically done, and now I want to start making the lever cap. This is a small piece that goes on the top that will actually tighten it down. And for this, I'm just going to have a screw running through it into the body, and that screw can tighten down in. So I have a bit of Australian red gum, and I'm cutting it down to be slightly thinner than the width of my iron. And I want to make it a good bit shorter than it in either length. I just want to make a block that will sit on top, and then we can shape that block to make it more pretty and organized ergonomic and, and eh, most of it's just making it look more pretty. Now I need to drill the hole for the bit to go in and I'm going to use these little brass inserts. Um, this one is slightly bigger than the thickness of the purple heart at this point and so I'm going to be boring out a hole that's the same as the, the diameter of the main shaft. I'll run it from one side, turn it around, and run it from the other so I don't get a terrible amount of blowout on, uh, on one side or the other. And then we can very, very carefully run it in. I want to make sure it is perpendicular to the bed of the iron, not the bed of the plane. If you put a few screws into it, lock it down, and hold your thumb on it, this will actually allow it to crank in pretty well. And then we can come in with a file and smooth it down to match both the sole underneath and the, the sole that the iron sits on, the bed that the iron sits on. And that way it actually goes all the way through and the full thickness of the body is the, the threaded portion. For the lever cap, I'm going to use a rasp to hog out most of it on the bottom. That little arch allows it to have a little bit of spring strength, and that bit of spring strength will help hold it in place and provide a little more friction. So I can bore down through this a hole that is slightly larger in diameter than the thumb screw I'm going to use. Actually, in this case, the hole was almost exactly the same, and so I wanted to come in with a rasp and clean it out and make it a little bigger. Everything else from this point is just making it look pretty. And I'm going to round over the corners. The front edge, I'm actually going to put a chamfer on. And the back edge, I'm going to round it over because uh, that's where your hand is at. And it looks kind of interesting to almost make it look like an arrow with uh, chamfers at the front edge. And then I'm going to thin out the thickness of this. And I like to do a little bit of sanding. It shows you where you need to go back and address it. And some of it I'll come off with the card scraper and some with a uh, file and really get it nice and clean and feeling good in the hand. 
back to the body of the plane, I'm going to round over the corners, and I want to actually make it a three-dimensional round, so almost a, a spherical shape in the corner. So I can start by rounding over the two ed edges on the end, and then I can round the top down, and then I kind of play, connect the dots, and take the corner off. And then I'll put it in my hand and see how it feels and adjust it. And I'm just going back and forth and seeing how it feels and how it looks. For a little bit of decoration on this, I thought, oh, let's do some like curly cues and shape things on here. And I kind of missed the mark on this. I was just eyeballing and making some circles on here. And then it ended up looking like crop circles with teardrops. And uh, it wasn't quite the design I wanted. Wish I had sat down and spent a little bit more time on actually thinking how it would look. For the back, I'm going to use a small Celtic Trinity, and that's just something I quickly draw in there. You have three circles that interact, and where the points come out, it makes this little weird three-shaped item. Uh, and it's a really quick, simple thing to put on there. This is, again, just something I'm, I'm whipping out relatively quickly. There's no reason to be special on this and spend a lot of time on it. I didn't have a whole lot of time to work today, so it was a, a fairly quick and easy project. After that, of course, boiled linseed oil and paste wax, because uh, nothing feels better in the hand than a simple boiled linseed oil finish. And let it rub out, apply the paste wax, work that in, and once the paste wax is set a little bit, I can wipe it off. Really quick, very simple finish, and, and very easy to work with. So let's take this for a test drive. To do that first, we need to actually sharpen the iron. And there's a little bit of a high spot on the, the board here, and so I can set up to ride on the uh, on the flat surface, and then the chisel can come in and, and work it out. This is really useful if you've got these big steps so you can actually plane right up to the corner and get into tight things. A chisel plane isn't used all the time. It's not a very common tool to have in the shop, but when you need it, you need it. There are a few instances where this is the tool for the job, and when you have it on hand, it's very useful. Quick and easy, and a lot of fun. Uh, about eight years ago, I made a series of them. I gave one away, and I have this one that the blade actually is magnetically attached to the bottom, and I kind of like that. Um, but having a little bit of an angle on it, I, I really enjoy this one now. I made another one of these, and I gave it away to a friend, and I wanted another one for myself. So, uh, yeah, a little chisel plane. It's a relatively quick and easy process, and most people can make it with an old iron that they have lying around and uh, a little piece of hardware and you're good to go. If you're wanting to get into plane making, this is a great place to start because most people could make this in an afternoon or a weekend. And it's a chance you can experiment, play around and try new things and do a little bit of carving and, and see what comes out. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be amazing and it's really easy to get a functional tool uh, without having to do all of the other extra things that you normally do with plane making. So. Fun little project. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, let me know those down below. I do read through all of them, and that really helps out the channel. Anytime you comment down below, or you could join one of those fun people who put comment down below, down below. Thank you. <laughs> like, comment, share, subscribe really helps us out. But if you really want to go even farther, there's some names over here. And those people, those are the patrons on Patreon. Uh, some of the patrons over here are... The patrons over here are really helping us out, and if you would like to support the channel and become a patron or a member here on the channel, or just click the thank you button down below, really that means a lot. It keeps us going, and you guys are the ones that allow us to do what we do. Without you, we would not be here, so thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, but you know all that down below links. I think they'll do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The Chisel Plane, a thieves' favorite hand tool.